Hey guys, and welcome to the second part of the Puck Educational. We might speedrun this one because I did just record it and something went horribly wrong. So I will do the same footage again, but probably I can actually do it faster now and even better. So with that said, last time I talked a little bit about the Puck coil placement and maybe it was a bit vague on what exactly I meant. I mean, I did say I was going to show you in this episode. So, speaking about Puck, is there any skill when placing this spell, the coil? Yes, there is. If you play against heroes such as Void Spirit, Ember Spirit, Queen of Pain, how do you want to place the coil? Well, do you want to place the coil like this? So that they're like, oh shit, I can just run, break it, and then get out? Like, maybe use my BKB or use an Astral Step, you know? Or maybe you want to coil them to make it as awkward as possible for them to break it, which gives you more time for your team to react. If you coil like this, he has to run half a second, and then there's the stun duration, then he's gone. So in this instance, that will be about three seconds of time. But what if you coil him like this? Now he has to run like a whole second more, and during the stun, you know, like your team can follow up and hit him. This is not possible if you coil them on the very edge. Which is another reason why a cast range talent on this hero can be very, very useful. Or maybe it's also okay for you to coil like this. Because, I mean, does he really want to break the coil by running into your team? I highly doubt it. Because remember also, the coil looks deceptively weird in terms of the, the, like the placement. Like, look like this. Just because he's on the very outer layer doesn't mean that if he steps down once, it's broken. Look how far he can run. He can run like another 300 range and then break it. So remember and think about how you place your coil. Like, uh, let's say we're about to tower dive a guy. I'm going to show you a, a case of this in a moment too. I want to coil him like this so that if he runs any closer to his teammates, he breaks so that hopefully we kill him here, okay? But let's do the same thing, I think here-ish, but let's coil him like that. See how far he gets to run. We would have to dive the tower now. So instead of killing him here, we need to do it here, which is a huge difference. And I'm going to show you this in a moment as well, like in a, in a live game that I, I played, like literally just a few days ago. So remember that. Now we're going to go into step two, which is Puck with four staff. Uh, I talked about it a little bit last time. Um, there are a few heroes that might trigger you to buy a four staff on this hero. Uh, which could be Night Stalker. Night Stalker is like really, really hard to play against as a puck because even if you Yule yourself, unless you have Blink ready, he will always be under you with silence. You cannot Blink, uh, you cannot Orb Yule and then um, go to your Orb. It, it doesn't work. So uh, it's very good against Night Stalker. It's very good against Ricky. These are probably the two best heroes that you can get it against. Um, I think it can be good against Underlord. I don't know if I'm missing anything. Uh, I guess Meepo. It can be good against Meepo. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm necessarily like missing any heroes. But also, we need to think about the offensive capability of the four staff when playing Puck. Because you can use it to break coil. Like this. But how... I mean, it's very simple, right? It's not any rocket science as to what you have to do when you play Puck in order for them to break the coil. It all depends on which direction they're facing, because if they're looking down and you force them, they're going to move down. If they're looking upwards and you force them, they're going to look, they're going to get forced to this direction. Whichever f direction they're facing, that's what's going to happen. So let's say I blink in and I coil. Well, if I coil him like this, it doesn't work, because he, actually it would work. So if he's in the middle, it still works. But like, let's say, let's say he's not quite in the middle and I do it like this. Like, this is not quite enough to break it. So you need to be careful, first of all, how you place it. So if he's looking up here, you coil him like that. Break. Boom. If he looks out down there, just make sure that they're not in the center. You know, they have to be more, like, to the edge of the, um, to the, edge of the coil. You do it like this. You break them. You silence, etc. And I'm just going to showcase you how much damage this is. This is without any spell amplification from a Null Talisman or a Veil. Okay, this is just a level 2 coil, no spell amp talent, nothing. Coil 
Break, one hit, silence orb. 900 damage. Let's take the spell amplification talent. Coil force, one hit, silence orb. 1000 damage. Let's go double null. Coil break, silence hit, orb. 1k50. Let's put a veil in there because I think veil is underrated on this hero. I, I do really think so. So, coil force, silence hit, orb. 1300 damage. Like close to it, like 1250 damage. Which is very strong. And also, mind you, you don't have to like initiate with coil into force. You can keep them in the coil as well. And once they decide to do some shenanigans, like maybe you want to keep them here, hit them, hit them, hit them. And now they're like, oh, I'm going to get ready to go out. No, nope, boom, you force them. And that's how you get the most damage out of it. But that's just something you want to play around with. On a small side note, the shard on Pac is also very good. Uh, mind you, though, that no matter what, you cannot break your own coil with the shard. It is not enough. Like, no matter where you put them, how perfectly you place the coil, and then you pop the W, it's not enough. But people always try to be as far on the edge as possible when they get coiled, right? So when they do this and then you silence, you can actually push them out too. So keep those things in mind, my good old friends. And now we're going to go into a quick game where I have a very similar situation to the coil placement that I just told you about. Like, remember, if you want to keep them there longer, maybe put them in the middle or maybe put them so that if they run in one direction, they break it towards your team. Basically, you want to make it take as long as possible for them to break it when they are very mobile here, so you want to keep there longer. But if you don't want them to run away at all, make it so that if they run away from you, it snaps right away. You want the coil to snap. Like It just depends on like what type of heroes they are. If they're low HP, you probably don't want to give them a long time to like move around. But let's load into this replay real quick. The, which we have here, where I can, you know, talk about my spell usage real quick and like generally how you want to play this this hero. You know, how does he team fight? How does he combine his spells? And at the end of the day, how do you want to place your coils and what are good items? So I think that this urn that uh, Topson, I'm gonna call Topson the inventor of the urn on Puck. I think it is so strong. And another strength of Puck, as you can see here. He's a very mobile hero. It's another reason why Pango... Pango is an underrated laner. One of the strengths of Pango is that he can connect to his support so easily and always help him. Puck is very similar. You see how the Tusk here is trading with the Lich? And I can just orb over and within one second I travel the distance from here to here. Which is a very underrated aspect of when these supports are trading like this. Um, yeah, another thing about your skill build, I like to go two levels in orb, and after that I max the silence, just so it aligns the cooldowns more precisely of the spells. But um, I have to remind you guys that Puck did get nerfed in the most recent patch. I do think the hero's still good. It's not like it makes this guy like, any worse or whatever. He lost three of his maximum damage pool, of his like max damage, and then he lost... 10, 20, 30 damage on Waning Rift, which is not a bad nerf. And uh, Dream Coil, the stun duration was decreased. It's the same level 1, then it's decreased by a quarter of a second and then half of a second. So yeah. Uh, I really like to rush Urn on this hero. Uh, I've seen Topson do it, and I just think it's amazing. I actually went Bottle and Urn, because they, they did harass us quite a lot with the Lich. And the Ursa was actually also playing very aggressively. So I really like this item choice. And yeah, we just play the lane, we throw our spells, we throw our bodies. Once you get six on Pac, it should kind of raise a question like... I mean, the main thing you should ask yourself is, how can I use Coil? Do I want to use Coil in my lane and then call people over to come to me? Or maybe the enemy mid laner is a Pango, a Voicefurt, an Ember, which are playing very aggressively because they, they are disrespecting you being in the game. They're like, oh, it's an offlane Pac. I'm not laning... It's not a mid Pac, so I can play aggressive, but... You can just TP here, coil them, and they'll probably die to you in the mid laner. But yeah, so right now, we don't have too much happening. We force some movement. We try to dive them. We force a TP here again. We pull the camps to the side. Nothing too crazy. We have a fight in the jungle. Everything is fine. Bottle refill. We run to bottom. And now look, we have this play onto the Ursa. We start with the silence. We go with the orb. We go here. Coil is on two second cooldown. This is our vision. 
we see him like for a little bit. So how do I coil him? Let alone like disregard the fact how much cast range I have. There are only so many places I can coil him right now. But ideally speaking, how do I want to coil him? He has no ulti, which we know, and he has barely any HP. If I coil him badly, he can run all the way until here before breaking it. But look how I coil him. If he runs any more than this, he's breaking it and he will die from the snap. So I basically kept him as close as possible. And look at him. He actually he made the best out of it. This was the most, this was, I think, the highest distance he could go. There's, he could not have gone any more than this. And in this instance, this was a very good coil placement. I don't know if I could have casted it any better. I think I could slightly. It's a bit deceptive. I think, yeah, I could cast it a little bit better, I think. Like, it could have been casted, like, here-ish, I think. And then he could only go this far. But, like, imagine if I place it on where he is. Then he can go all the way till here. Maybe he could even juke behind this tree, and this gives him not only more space to run away, but it would most likely also give his team more time to react, because this way he had to stop running earlier, because either it's you stop running and then you let us hit you to death, or you run and snap it and then you die from the snap. So this is just like, I think it's a decent showcase of how you want to coil, like if they're low HP and you don't care if they snap it, put them on the edge. But if you care, if you want to keep them there, don't put them on the edge. Put them in the middle or put them coiled towards your team so that they have to break it downwards like this. But yeah, um, I think I go Travels in this game first. I think Travels on this hero are amazing. Uh, Puck as a hero is very mobile. He pushes lanes that other people can't. And not only can he push lanes that other people cannot, he pushes them very fast. Like he can, You can push out the lane and already be connecting to your allies. So here we're going to be annoying, we silence the Ursa, we throw an urn on him. Actually, we didn't throw an urn on him, but we're just very annoying. We go mid, we place our coil, we use some spells, we hit mid. We push a side lane, we have travels, we TP top. Small fight, throw an urn, go back bottom. Like, as you can see, I'm either top or I'm bottom. I, I'm bottom, I push out the lane, I get recalled to top or I travel to top. And then we get a kill. This is like how you create scenarios. You get gold like this, you apply map pressure, and with the map pressure, you then get to... You get kills and uh, you know apply pressure in another way. So here we orb, we see them on the map, we see the Lich, we see the Rubik. I get to silence him, but note how once I silence him, I'm already posturing backwards because this hero, you don't want to hard commit on Puck. You always want to be aware of your positioning. If you can man up and hit them, go for it. But generally speaking, be more oh, be aware of your positioning. Here I want to keep the Ursa. I mean, I could maybe have coiled slightly better here. But I think it's also like a bit of a, a bit of a chaotic fight. We have an arcane rune. There's a chain frost bouncing, and also I want to kind of coil both. I could coil that he's actually. I don't want him to snap it right away because he still has ulti, and I want to give my S uh, my invoker. I think some time to come over. So I think coiling him like in the middle is fine because that also allows me to keep the lich in. So I think this coil is fine. So here we earn the Ursa. We silence both. The coil sadly has ended. We orb downwards again. Sadly, we don't quite get to kill him, but it was a good play either way. We push out bottom again. As you can see, we're just living on side lanes right now, which this is like where an offlane pug lives, whatever. Try to get the kill, doesn't work. We push out bottom all the way. We TP mid. As you can see, like we're generally just pushing lanes that people don't want to go to because I am puck. I use QW, the wave is dead. I can phase shift. I'm fast. I'm elusive. And I can set up kills. So here, push out top, item is completed, TP to a fight, or like TP to a potential play, we look around, yep, sadly, not much happens, we're chilling, use some spells, don't overcommit, fine, combo, combo, and here, let's have a quick look how this fight starts, we're smoked, we see that there's an Ursa, I have, remember, I have cast range challenge, I think the cast range challenge is so good, especially when you buy these items, shout out to Dobson, Silence, we see him. I orb out already because imagine if I'm orbing through the Ursa to his team. Hmm, might put myself in a bad position because if I go to the orb, I'm inside of his team. Well, if I don't go to the orb, I'm inside of the Ursa and I don't want to be in either of these places. So think about where you're putting the orb. Like you can't just blink. Let's, let's pretend I blink here. 
we're expecting his team to be here because we kind of know they're there, okay? I blink behind the Ursa, silence, and then orb this way. Well, either I go behind enemy lines with the orb, or I don't go to the orb at all, and then I'm still inside enemy lines either way, which means you would have to blink in, silence, and then orb backwards to your team. You want to make it, like, hard for the enemies to kill you. So here, we use our spells, we orb out, we're in uh, phase shift, we get to e-blade him. Sadly, I couldn't quite go to my orb because I get soulbound. We barely get to stay alive. We get to phase shift most of the duration of the black hole. We get to go to the orb. We phase shift again. We use our magic wand. And another great reason why I think orb uh, the urn is so great, not only with the e but just by itself. I can now earn myself. I can clarity myself. In this case, I don't want to because I'm going to base. But let's say you're fighting and the fight will continue. You can orb out, earn yourself or earn your carry. Get higher HP and then go back into the fight. So now I think I'm going to go... I have a Lincoln's queued up, but I think I'm just going to go for a Blink Dagger because at this point, I feel like I want a Blink. I don't want a 12-minute Blink Dagger. It feels weird. You don't really have the levels to support it. Generally, your teammates aren't strong enough to support it. But here, at this point, I feel like we need to make something happen. I want to... I can kill their supports, you know? If I find the Lich or the Rubik, Blink, uh, E-Blade, Silence, Orb, Coil, and then maybe he just dies. So... We just picked up the Blink Dagger, and let's have a look at the map. Top lane, I see Grimstroke, I ping him. Now, let's see how we combo this. And again, let's think about the coil placement. We see him on this ward, great ward, whoever placed it, well done. So, we go here, we see him. How do I want to coil him? I don't want to give him any space to run up here and kite, and I don't want him to run anywhere to the right and make it you know, give him less distance to the tower. I want to keep the distance to the tier 3 tower as big as possible, so it's harder for his team to react. So we coil him that if he now runs up, he breaks. If he runs right, he breaks. We get the E-blade off, he breaks. <coughs> we silence, we orb, we earn. I am a level 17 puck. And I just nearly solo killed the enemy mid laner with my spells and an E-blade and an earn charge. Look how much damage he took. He, at this point, has taken 1,500 damage. 1,500. And I have not put myself out of position. I can orb where I want. I can face shift, blink, whatever. So now the fight starts. Their mid hero dies. Again, we're kiting backwards. We're waiting for a spell. Spells are ready. Blink is coming back up. We're going towards the enemies again. We see a good opportunity. We blink across. We silence. Look at the orb. We don't want to orb right. We don't want to orb towards the enemy team. We either want to orb to the left or anywhere diagonal backwards. We orb... I wouldn't say it's the best orb, but it's good enough. It allows me to get out of their base. Phase shift, orb out. We're fine. We go bottom. We push the lane. By the time we've pushed out the lane twice, we're already ready to connect to our team again. Uh, they did some weird... Uh, they did some weird shit, like the invoker left them, didn't help them roach, like... They didn't like Alacrity, the Bloodseeker, so we nearly lost the game here. But anyway, that's beside the point. You're a puck, you're allowed to push out some lanes. I think now we're gonna go for some uh, a Lincoln Sphere, because I'm afraid that they're gonna go for an eventual uh, Abyssal Blade, and so on. Like, they have Abyssal Blade coming up on the Ursa, they have a Hex on the Grimstroke, and otherwise I might get lifted by the Rubik. I mean, this type of hero, you want to be aware of your positioning always. You want to play as aggressive as possible with a little bit of risk, okay? You never want to over-risk your life with Puck. Just play on your spells, play on your range, abuse your cast range, and abuse more your mobility. Be as annoying as possible, like here. I go top, I hit their base tower, they TP back with Lich and Rubik, you know, they're... Not feeling the greatest here. They do some weird... They do some weird dive, or like, not really dive, so we get Soulbound, we posture left. It's about to be over, <coughs> so we run right again. Now pay attention. The orb, we go to it. This is our vision. We see the Grimstroke. I blink in. I finish him. Sadly, maybe I'm... I like what I do here, but with hindsight, maybe it's too greedy. I hear the buybacks from my team. I'm like, oh, okay, I want to keep this fight going, which means if the enemy team run right, I want to be there and like toy with them. Throw an urn on them, throw an e-blade on them, face shift in their face, you know. But they have this ward. Unlucky for us, they get us killed. They buy back on the Grimstroke, but I buy back too. And now, same story. We just play on range. Try to keep them here as long as we can. 
I uh, couldn't go to my thing. Yeah, luckily for us, they do some weird tower dive. And they try to keep chasing us. So yeah, we go for this Lincolns because right now, it's just hard for them to kill us. Or like, it's just hard for them to kill me. But once I get this Lincolns, it is even harder. I mean, what I'm saying is that they can kill me with their items. You know, Blink Abyssal, Hex on him, and I die. But if I buy this Lincolns, it makes it that much harder for them to kill me. And here again, I don't know where his enemies are, but how are they going to kill me? They need Ursa, like, right here to kill me. And he's not there. Silence, Urn, <coughs> hit the Enigma. We apply a lot of pressure. We are starting to get Thirst damage. They have to use Lift. We get to orb in. I think the Bloodseeker is fine. I earn him. I have no mana, but the Enigma ended up dying. They ended up dying on Enigma. They used a BKB charge. I believe the Lincolns is complete. Yeah. We use some spells. We're kiting. And like, just look at the spell usage of this fight. Here. I see this guy mid. I just coil him to like start the fight a bit. You know, they're too dead, so... I don't need a perfect coil, I just need to start the fight. I E-Blade him, he has to use his ulti, and like, look how I'm playing. I'm not hitting him. I don't really want to. I silence, I go phase shift, I try to stay alive. Here the Rubik shows himself, so I'm gonna orb probably here to get some vision. I orb, I see both supports. I am ignoring the Ursa. Look at the Ursa. I don't wanna go on him, he's bkb <coughs> I'm just gonna go on the supports. Look, hit the Rubik, hit the Rubik. Hit the Rubik, silence is coming up, I blink, I silence, I orb the Rubik, I kill him. Now I go help my team, because to be fair, 4v1, I think they can kill an Ursa. What is Ursa going to do if nobody's going to stun for him? So they're starting to feel bad. We go to the side lane again. We queue, we're queuing up an Octarine core, because I think Octarine is incredible on this hero. It makes you tankier, it gives you higher cast range, it gives you lower cooldown. It is just incredible. So that's what we're going for now. Remember, care about your positioning. Think about your spell usage with the orb and the silence. And think about how you place your coil. And remember, Puck lives off of lane push. You want to push lanes. You do it fast, you do it safe. I don't know if there's much more to this game. We smoke. They come around. We start. Like, just look. Look at this beautiful start to the fight. Like, yeah, I guess the Lich is, like, messing up a bit, but just, like, look at this low-risk kill. E-Blade from, like, a thousand range. Silence. I have a Lincoln Sphere. We have an Eye Shard flying out. So this is just... This is an E-Blade, Silence, Eye Shard, Blood right. And the Lich is dead. He hasn't even seen a hero, and he's dead. The fight starts at 4v5. I don't know why the Bloodseeker is running melee range to kill this Lich who's E-bladed, but it doesn't really matter. It just goes to show you that like the cast range, the local middle of this hero is great. You can hit the, enemies, the enemy heroes with your spells and still not be in a bad position here. I see the Enigma, I coil him. Like, look how aggressive this Puck is playing. We kill this guy. Let's just look at Puck perspective, okay? Let's see it. Let's look at my perspective. I know that they're there. I'm going to orb here. I go up this high ground. It's a little bit greedy, but Lich is dead, and I know the Ursa is down there. So I run up this high ground. Look at these guys. If they want to go on me right now, they would have to break my Linkus with Rubik, then lift me, then Hex or Black Hole me. So they don't want to do that. I see the Enigma here. Boom. I coil him, which now means he either has to BKB and run out of it, or if he wanted to blink anywhere, he can't because he just took damage. So his blink is now on cooldown for three seconds. I also, if you look at the minimap, I see that the Grim is down there. And I know that the Rubik is there too, right? So I blink, which is a little bit greedy, but if I'm fast with Blink Silence, I can Blink Silence both their heroes, because remember, these guys don't have BKBs. It's a support Rubik, and it's a Midgrim who doesn't have BKBs. So look at the chase here. I coil the Enigma, we killed the Lich, I Blink Beyond, I silence these two. Now I'm a little bit greedy, you know, they pop the Lincolns on me, I E-Blade the Grim, I still get lifted. I have like three heroes' attention on me, okay? I get lifted, I get silenced, Inkswell isn't available anymore, we're still alive, I phase shift again, I get to silence them again, and orb through them, and I think at this point, like, they're just getting toyed with, their Ursa died, their Lich already bought back, I have spells soon, I'm pinging that I wanna go in again soon, I blink in, I have another round of silence, and orb, and E-Blade for the Grim here, sadly, um, <coughs> I did mess up this kill, maybe I shouldn't have E-Bladed him so early, 
Like here, I think I have to hit him a few times and then finish him off with the E-Blade. Because I think there, I kind of had to leave him. I don't... Yeah, he gets to live. But at the end of the day, Rubik, Enigma, and the Grimstroke didn't play this fight. They couldn't. They had this pesky little bug on them who kept silencing them and stunning them and stuff like this, you know? And at this point, like, the game is over. But this just, like, showcases you. Uh, like, this just goes to show, like... How this hero wants to be played. You want to be in their face, but at the same time, not really. You know, you want to be in their face while at the same position, have the option to leave and already go out. And uh, I'm just going to show you guys a quick item build that the uh, top 10 has been going for, which is pretty much the same that I have done in this game. So I'm basically just copying him. Um, he played a game against. I played a game against Nigma. Like two weeks ago, and he played a game against us, I think, in Viking, not a, not too long ago as well, where he went a similar build. Um, I thought he should have altered it a little bit, but his build was still very good. It was also along the lines of like E Blade, Octarine Core, stuff like that. Um, <coughs> like if they don't have any Orchids or Silences, then I think that build can be good, but perhaps you can go E Blade into Lotus Orb, and suddenly you're very tanky. So let's have a look here. In this game against Nigma, what did he go for? So when he goes mid, he likes to go the double null into an, an urn. He doesn't go bottle. In the game I play just now, I had bottle and urn. I think in offlane, it's probably okay to maybe do it, but personal preference. Just, like, if you play offlane puck, you can go urn, bottle, and double null, and raindrop. Like here, he has double null, urn, raindrop. He cannot buy a bottle as well. Or if he buys a bottle, he has to skip one null talisman. Like, just don't buy five small items, okay? I think three is the most. Like, raindrop kind of vanishes after a while anyway, so... He goes treads, he goes gold scepter, makes him tankier, makes him harder to kill, <coughs> and it gives him the E-Blade to combo with, throw on his allies, etc. And then he goes lens. Lens combined with the cast range talent is mwah, it's amazing. And of course, it builds into Octarine Core, which gives you HP and everything, which just feels ooh, so, so, so goddamn great. And now we're only going to look at one more game. We're not even going to look at the game. We're just going to look at the items of the game. I'm going to give you a quick summary as to why I like it and why I think it's strong. And then that's probably just going to be it. And that, at the end of the day, makes you all better puck players or understand the hero more. So this is a game that we played against Alliance in the DPC. Of course, they won the series. They're a very scary team. Congrats to them for qualifying to the major. Um... I play Puck in this game. It doesn't even matter who's playing it. We're just going to look at the item build again. I have an urn because I love it. It gives you armor. It gives you 1.5 mana region, which is great. A magic wand. I like stats. I like stick charges. I like mana. We have boots. I go again. I go boots of travels. I live off of the side lanes. I'm faster. I'm more connectable with my team. I can push out these lanes, etc. And then I go for a straight up axe for multiple reasons. I think Puck axe is so strong. And I think a lot of people know it's strong, but they don't want to build this item. Um, so with how the game is going right now, first of all, let's look at Puck in this game. They have Tiny Combo, and Lion Finger, and Lion Hex. So they have two guys that have stuns, and a lot of bursts. Tiny Combo into Finger probably kills most of us, but the Tidehunter, okay? So, what is the use of Puck Ags in this game? First of all, it makes me tanky. It gives me good buildup. If I buy a point booster and a raindrop and this, I don't think a tiny combo alone will kill me. So I remove the potential of me dying to a solo tiny. I think right now I can only die to tiny and lion unless he has dagger. Okay, I can die to tiny pango or tiny lion. But I cannot die to caudal tiny, ursa caudal, Ursa, Lion. I can also not die to Pango Ursa because they only have one stun. So I can only die to a combination of like... I guess Lion Ursa can kill me. And <coughs> Tiny Lion can kill me. Just gener generally speaking, if they catch me on a silent. So this item gives me 375 HP on a squishy hero, which is great. It also gives me mana, which is great. 
And once I get the Axe, I can coil the Pangolier, and he is useless. I can coil the Tiny, who's going for BKB, which he kind of has to, because look at our lineup. Once they get BKBs, we struggle a lot. Ravage gets evaded. Um, they can just stand still when they get ruptured, because, yeah, they're not going to get Ravaged. Nature's Prophet isn't going to do much for them. Clock isn't going to do much for them, and I'm not going to do much for them if they have BKB. So they can either choose to stay and fight... <laughs> or they can just run away if they're not ruptured, because we probably have to rupture the pango. But, let's say I have an Aghanim. Suddenly, my Bloodseeker is more free in who to rupture. Because now, rupture doesn't go from a pango-only spell. Like, it does, it, it's not a pango-only spell anymore. It's a any hero spell, or maybe just a core spell, you know? Like, as soon as I can get pango plus one core, I will take that coil. Tiny has BKB. He wants to, like, run around freely in the fight. He wants to combo, run to his coddle, smack a guy, then BKB, come back in. But nope, I can coil him, and now suddenly these guys can just run away. You know? Or now, if I coil the Pango, maybe they will just stand their, uh, like, stand their ground for a bit and then run away eventually. But now they're getting ruptured, so they can't run. They're forced to stay and fight us without a Pangolier, because he's either ruptured... Or he's, you know, getting coiled by the puck with the axe. Then I go blink after, it helps me to deal with the supports, it helps me to get the type of coils I want. And then, again, I'm going for this Lincolns because it ensures my game and it makes it harder for them to kill us. Because as you can see, I have one death right now. And I don't think I'm going to get many more in this game. Uh, I think right now what is happening is that <coughs> it is kind of hard for them to kill me in particular. The Lion doesn't have a dagger. The Ursa doesn't have a Abyssal Blade yet. He has a dagger and a Badger, but not an Abyssal Blade. They lack this instant lockdown. Like, yeah, Tiny can jump me, but in order to lock me down, he has to toss me. He can't avalanche me, because I will face shift. Pango locking me down multiple times is hard, because he doesn't have a Yules. He has Blink and maybe the Shard, too. But then he has to roll into Blink on me. And... <laughs> get that done before I can coil him, which is not very easy to do. So, once he has Blink Abyssal, they maybe have like a new win condition. Oh, I have Blink Abyssal, guys. I can Abyssal the puck and we kill him. But, I'm already building a Lincoln Sphere. Like, I basically would have it in like 50 seconds from now. But, we take a fight anyway that decides the game and it's done. If they're looking upwards and you force them, they're gonna look... They're gonna get forced to this direction, whichever direction they're facing that's what's gonna happen so let's say i blink in and i coil well if i coil him like this it doesn't work because he, actually it would work so if he's in the middle it still works but like let's say let's say he's not quite in the middle and i do it like this like this is not quite enough to break it so you need to be careful first of all how you place it so if he's looking up here you coil him like that break boom if he looks out down there, just make sure that they're not in the center. You know, they have to be more like to the edge of the um, to the edge of the coil. You do it like this. You break them. You silence, etc. And I'm just gonna showcase you how much damage this is. This is without any spell amplification from a null talisman or a veil. Okay, this is just a level two coil. No spell amp talent. Nothing. Coil break. One hit. Silence orb. Nine. 100 damage. Let's take the spell amplification talent. Coil force. One hit. Silence orb. 1000 damage. So here we orb. We see them on the map. We see the Lich. We see the Rubik. I get to silence him. But note how once I silence him, I'm already posturing backwards. Because this hero, you don't want to hard commit on Puck. You always want to be aware of your positioning. If you can man up and hit them, go for it. But generally speaking, be more oh, be aware of your positioning. Here, I want to keep the Ursa. I mean, I could maybe have coiled slightly better here, but I think it's also like a bit of a, a bit of a chaotic fight. We have an arcane rune. There's a chain frost bouncing, and also I want to kind of coil both. I could coil that he's actually. I don't want him to snap it right away because he still has ulti, and I want to give my S uh, my invoker I think some time to come over. So I think coiling him like in the middle is fine because that also allows me to keep the lich in. So I think this coil is fine. So here we earn the Ursa. We silence both. The coil sadly has ended. We orb downwards again. Sadly, we don't quite get to kill him, but it was a good play either way. Think about where you're putting the orb. 
Like, you can't just blink. Let's, let's pretend I blink here. We're expecting his team to be here because we kind of know they're there, okay? I blink behind the Ursa, silence, and then orb this way. Well, either I go behind enemy lines with the orb, or I don't go to the orb at all, and then I'm still inside enemy lines either way, which means you would have to blink in, silence, and then orb backwards to your team. You want to make it, like, hard for the enemies to kill you. So here, we use our spells, we orb out, we're in uh, phase shift, we get to e-blade him. Sadly, I couldn't quite go to my orb because I get soulbound. We barely get to stay alive. We get to phase shift most of the duration of the black hole. We get to go to the orb. We phase shift again. We use our magic wand. And another great reason why I think orb uh, the urn is so great, not only with the e-blade, but just by itself. I hope that everyone can learn a thing or two, whether it's to play puck yourself or just to learn more about the hero. But with that said, this is going to conclude part two of our puck guide, which, you know, completes the hero as a whole. The next hero I will, I will be doing a guide for is Darkseer. So stay tuned for that. It's probably going to come out in March. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, write your feedback down below in the comments. And other than that, shout out to my partners over at Bitburger 0 0. And yeah, thank you all for watching. And I hope that you just enjoy the content and that it can help you. Bye-bye.